What's up my fellow LTD addicts? Let's talk about Rebu. Rebu is a desktop application that allows you to change the look and the feel of your website without having to dig into the code. Now it's currently available as a lifetime offer on AppSumo and in this video I'm going to help you to decide whether it's a good investment for your business or something you can let safely expire without the FOMO. Hey everybody, I'm Dave from ThatLTD.life and I review software tools that have lifetime offers. If you're new around here and you like content like this, make sure you click the subscribe button, hit the little bell so you get notified when new reviews are posted. Now let's get right into it. We're talking about Rebu today. Rebu is on AppSumo. Uh, it's $49 for a single code. Let's uh, go down to the plans here and see what we're dealing with. So Rebu, as I mentioned in the intro, lets you edit your website without having to look at the code. Uh, and what we're looking at here is for 49 bucks, you get to edit up to 20 projects. So that's basically 20 websites. Uh, and for uh, two codes, you get 40 projects. And for three codes, you get unlimited. So, uh, you know, this has been the trend with AppSumo apps recently is that you pretty much need to stack two or three to get to the point where you don't have to worry about having to invest more into the tool in the future. So let's go ahead and get started with the software. Now, contrary to most AppSumo deals, Rebu is actually a desktop application. It's not a software as a service. To run it, you have to download the software and launch it from your OS. Now they have Mac versions, they have Windows versions. I think they even have a Linux version. So everybody should be covered here. Uh, now I haven't uh, added an application to this version of Rebu yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. What I'm gonna be stylizing in this video is actually a Thrivecart page. So this is a checkout page for a course, an online course. Uh, it's using Thrivecart, but I'd like to change how it looks. You can see that the, it's pretty small. Um, you know, it would just be nicer to maybe make this look a little bit more modern, change some of the colors. Now, these are things that Thrivecart does not let me do. There's uh, Thrivecart is, of, of course, another uh, lifetime deal. If you haven't heard of it, uh, it's a really cool uh, checkout system. It lets you sell products online but the templates it gives you are kind of restrictive. You can't do a whole lot with them. So we're gonna see how much we can mangle and uh, reshape the look of a Thrivecart page. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this URL for this uh, online course, and I'm just gonna paste it into my new Rebu project, and I'll give this a title. And let's go ahead and hit Create. Okay, so uh, instantly Rebu has pulled in that Thrivecart page. And now I can go ahead and start stylizing it. The way it works is actually pretty simple. You hit the stylizer button over here, the restylizer button, uh, and that'll let you select any element that you want and start to change it. Uh, there are some other tools we'll get into uh, down below, but I think the primary function is really this restylizer. So I'll click that. And then the next thing I need to do is choose what element on the page I want to change the look of. So uh, one thing I wanna change is maybe I don't like uh, this, this green color. I'd like to uh, remove that. So I can say, click on this, this little bar up here. And it gives me a little bit of helpful information. It says when you've completed the changes, uh, you can click this button to select a new element. I'll go ahead and close that for now. So I've got this element selected. And remember, I wanna change the color. I'm gonna to go to background and I'll go ahead and just choose maybe more of a, a pink color here. Of course, I could match this precisely if I took more time uh, and I'll click away. Now, you notice that it doesn't change right away and that's because Thrivecart is actually using an image for this. So what I can do is choose image none and there now my color is showing up and I can, you know, as, as I move the slide around, you can see it actually does update in real time, which I think is, is important. So I'm gonna go ahead and click uh, this element selector button. And now I can see that is updated to the pink color that I wanted. Uh, we can go ahead and change say the button color as well. I'll click on that. And I'm getting that same pop-up to teach me how to use the software. And of course I probably want to match that color precisely, but for the sake of this video, I'll just uh, kind of get close and we'll go ahead and uh, hit the, the change element button. Okay, so real quickly, I've changed the uh, the color of a few buttons or of a button and changed this little ribbon at the top. Haven't done anything very drastic. Let's say I really wanted this to be more of a uh, full column width page, right? I don't wanna have this sidebar here. Could I do that with Rebu? Well, let's find out. I'm gonna go ahead and just click this entire column and then let's go ahead and say, don't show me this again. Uh, and then I'm gonna go down here to where it says size. 
and there is a width controller. And if I start to bring this out, all right, there we go. That's starting to look a little bit better. Um, you know, you can really get some pretty good control here with Reboot. I was actually pretty impressed. Now it looked kind of silly down below because I have this uh, other column that is of, of course not looking appropriate. So I'll click this button here to uh, go ahead and change the next item and I will resize this as well. All right, great, that is looking good. So let's go ahead and save that. Now, let's say I wanted these uh, changes to go ahead and be posted live. How do I do that? Well, up here in the upper right-hand corner, uh, it says connect reboot with your website. And you can see that it's not connected right now. The little socket is disconnected. If I click that, it gives me uh, just two lines of code. I can copy it. And now I'm just gonna go over to Thrivecart and I'm actually going inside of the product and looking at the tracking area. So this is located under checkout inside of Thrivecart and the tracking area. Really, you just need access to the section where you would insert codes, tracking codes, anything. So most software lets you do this, even if it doesn't have sophisticated uh, tools to let you stylize the page, almost every piece of software is gonna have a place to inject a tracking pixel. So what I'm gonna do is put the, this code here uh, on this checkout page. So it's gonna be this middle field for Thrivecart and I'll just paste it in and hit save. Now, as this is updating, I can go back to reboot and reload. And let's see, it says your website has been correctly connected. I'll go ahead and close that. And I can see now that uh, everything is looking uh, as I edit it. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually publish this. Uh, there's a little cloud here with an arrow up, I hit publish. And it says your website is updating. It'll take about a minute for this to be visible. Okay, so here is the original checkout page. You can see this is live. And I've got uh, in another browser here, I was able to load up the edited version. So this is actually live. It's got the same URL, hasn't changed the location of my page. And I can see that everything looks much better. In my opinion, I like this look. Uh, much more than the original one. Of course, I could do more inside of Reboot. Let's dig into some of the deeper features here. Uh, let's say I wanted to change the font that I was using for this headline. Well, uh, that's in the restyler as well. So I can click the select element button, choose that title, and then just go to text here. And let's make that a lot bigger. And I could change the font. I'm gonna go ahead and choose one of these uh, built-in fonts here. We've got Montserrat, that's a popular font. I think that looks much better. So far, we've done some very basic, but rather impactful changes to the site, but we can continue from here. We can do more complex things. One thing that really bothers me about Thrivecart is the fact that there is some branding down at the bottom that you can't completely remove. What's interesting is you can actually remove the power by Thrivecart part, but you can't remove the year. The year remains. I've actually asked Thrivecart support about this and they say, no, we, we don't let you disable that. When you embed this on a page, it, it just looks kind of awkward. If you embed the cart on a, a checkout page, it doesn't seem like it makes sense to have a random year sitting there. So using Reboot, I can go back to the restyler here and I'll just select this chunk of text down here at the bottom. And then I can go over to settings and where it says visibility, I'll just choose hidden and boom, just like that, it is gone. Uh, so I really like that functionality uh, and that ability to just hide certain elements that say the service you're using doesn't want you to use. Now, let's see what else we can do with Reboot that's maybe a little bit more dramatic. There are all of these other selections here. Let's go over a few of them. You've got hover effects. So as that name implies, you're gonna be able to change what happens when you hover over an item. Let's say I wanted to change this uh, secure checkout button so that when I hover over it, it uh, let's say it pops. Now, as I do that, you can see it just gives it a little pop. Let's do another one here. Let's go over to this button and let's have it have a little bit of activity. We'll make it grow. When I scroll over it now, it gets a little bit bigger. So that's nice and engaging. I like that. Let's look at some of our other options here. There is an HTML editor. So if you do know HTML, you can go ahead and actually change how the code is presented to the end user. It works the same way. You would just select the area you want to work on. And there you go. There is all the HTML from the page here and I can go ahead and tweak it as I see fit. Next, we have entry animations. And this is gonna be very similar to our hover effects, except you won't have to wait until someone hovers over an item. It'd be as the page loads, an animation is created. So let's go ahead and uh, play around with this button again. And let's say uh, on page load, 
we're going to have it uh, fade left. We can see kind of a preview there. Uh, you know, this, these types of animations are very common uh, with sales pages. You see that probably not on a checkout page, but uh, it is there if you'd like to, to tweak those. Now let's talk about the next option, which is CSS filters. CSS filters uh, allow you to edit images or icons without actually having to pull them open up inside of your Photoshop or whatever type of photo editor you're using. So the way this would work is you choose, say, an icon or an image. Here I've got the thumbnail for this course, and I can actually apply a filter, you know, like your uh, Instagram filters. Be the, if you're not familiar with this concept, I could, say, change it to grayscale or black and white. I could blur the item. Um, this would be great if you're trying to kind of hide content. Um, you could uh, invert it so that it's, you know, kind of got that uh, trippy look to it. Uh, we could play with the contrast, things like that. So these are the built-in filters. There's probably about 20 of them that you can play around with. There's also this option to reset on over, which basically means uh, if you hover over the item, it will be reset. So I'll go ahead and blur this one more time. And if I have this set to yes, now when I hover over it, there you go, it comes into focus. So uh, you kind of like a scratch off game, I guess that could be interesting to get people to engage with your page. I'm not sold uh, on the idea, but it's cool that it's there. Now let's look at tooltips. Tooltips are great if you have a complex page and you need to teach your users how to engage with it. So let's see what it does for me here. I'm going to click on it and uh, I'm going to select the element that I want to instruct people on. Let's say it was this uh, payment information. As people uh, hover over the payment information, I could say uh, we accept all major credit cards. Call if you have questions and I Go ahead and hit return there. And now if I hover over this, we get a little pop-up. And you know, I can maybe put my phone number there or something like that. So there is some stylization that I can do. Uh, you have these different themes for the tooltip. So I have a white version. Uh, there is a success, which is gonna be kind of this uh, green color, an info box, which is blue. You can see, you know, there's lots of different variations. We can also change the size. Uh, so this is the biggest size and here is the smallest size and I'll let you use your imagination to see what the sizes would be in between. Now let's talk about the action on click feature. This is kind of interesting because it will change how your users interact with your page. However, I've had trouble getting it to actually function. So the idea here is that you'd select an element. Let's say this money back guarantee. We haven't done anything with this yet and we would choose an action to occur. So let's say I wanted a URL to open in a pop-up when you clicked on this window. So I'll go ahead and enter a URL here. We'll just go to say Google. Let's go ahead and save this. And I'm gonna click on the preview. Now, if I click on this money back guarantee, I would expect a Google window to pop open. And if I click, nothing's really happening for me. So I don't know if there's something wrong on my end or uh, maybe this part of the tool just isn't fully uh, fleshed out yet. So even though action on click isn't working for me yet, uh, I don't really find it as a deal breaker because I don't suggest using it to begin with. You don't wanna change how your website works through an editor like this. It should be done at the source. So for me, it's kind of a, I'd like to see if the features there, it should function as expected, but uh, I'm not crushed over it. Let's talk about ribbons. This is kind of cool. A uh, nice little style touch here. If I wanted to add a ribbon to this, I could just select it. And there you go, I have a nice little ribbon added to my form. That looks good. I can do things like change the color here. Maybe I'll make it darker and I can change the text. I can actually move the position of it from uh, left to right to top to bottom. And let's put it up, up here in the top left and we'll change the text to say, the deal ends soon. And uh, we can change the color of the text as well. Maybe I'll make it bright red. I don't like that at all, but we'll save it for the video. All right, just a few elements left here. Let's go ahead and look at social share. Uh, this is basically a widget that's gonna live over on the side of the screen. You've all seen these as you're reading a blog post. Uh, there's a, a little widget where you can go ahead and share the content. So that is kind of a nice touch. Of course, you can customize this for whatever platforms you want to display. Uh, I think Google Plus is dead, so we don't need to include that anymore. Uh, but Reddit's popular, let's add that one back in. Now let's take a look at the scroll to top feature. You've seen buttons like this before. Uh, so when you scroll down, you get the little icon to allow you to scroll up to the top. 
You can change how this looks. There's these different icons here that I can toggle through. And of course I can change the position as well. Uh, I can make this be on the left or the right hand side. For example, here we have a chat and over the left it has the scroll at the top and you can position it wherever you like on the page. It, it, by default, the slider ends at 200 pixels, but you can override it by just typing in a value manually. So uh, that is the scroll to top feature. Just a couple left here. Let's look at the cookie law. We've all seen banners like this. These annoy the bejesus out of me. Uh, every time I go to a website, I've got to click six things to be able to read the content. And there you go. You can change the style here uh, as well as the text there. It's similar to the tooltips, there is a few set styles to choose from. Now let's look at the typewriter functionality. This is basically uh, just to animate a headline. I'll go ahead and click this and you can see it starts to type it out for me. I can change the delay and how long it takes to type. So I can make it very fast or very, very slow. And I can change the color of the cursor as well. So those are the features I have available there. Now let's look at the image banner option. I'm gonna click on that and go ahead and hit this plus button to add a new image banner. You can see it wants me to select an image over here so I can either uh, paste in a URL or uh, upload it right to Rebu. I'll click on my images and there's an upload but button here in the corner. All right, I chose an item to upload. I'm gonna let that upload here and there we go. It's been added to my library and I'll select that one. And now I have this image down here in the corner. I could link this up to go to another location um, and I could change the width of it. So let's say I wanted it to be bigger or smaller. I can change that as well, position it wherever I want on the page. So similar to the social share feature, the image banner lets you link out to another page or a different part of the web. All right, we're nearing the end of this little tutorial in our review. Let's go ahead and look at the last few options. We can uh, show the preview here. We've already seen this. This is where you save. Here is where we publish the changes to the cloud. Uh, we can see that our page is linked up here. I can actually click this and get that code again if I need it. Uh, and then we also have the ability to create links. So I can create inside of one project, I can actually link out to an entire website. So I would just uh, add a new jump link here and type in the next URL and that would all live inside of that one project. Uh, and if I'm done, I can hit this power button and leave and add a new project right from this main window. So by now you should have a pretty good understanding of how Reboot works. Let's talk about some of the pros and cons. Now, not to be snarky here, but I'd say the first con is that you have to use Reboot at all. If at all possible, you always wanna change things at the source. When you use Reboot, you're then relying on their CDN. You're gonna slow down your site just by nature because there's more third-party calls that have to be made. So if you're using something like WordPress, Wix, Squarespace, one of those services, and you can edit your website right at the source, I highly suggest doing that. However, if you're using a software as a service, something like Thrivecart, and you want to change the appearance to your end user in ways they don't let you, then this is a real hero. Uh, so you have to think about your business. Are you using services like WordPress or Squarespace most of the time where you can actually go ahead and change the look and the feel right on the page? or are you relying on these types of third-party services? Now, if you do use even one or two of these types of services, then I think Rebu has a real value here. I know I would pay $49 just to hire a developer to find some way to hack together the Thrivecart edits that I did here in this page. Now I don't have to because Rebu let me do it. I think 20 projects is gonna be enough for most people, but it's nice that the option to upgrade is there, so you can go to 40 or even unlimited for just adding another code or two. So what's my final score for Reboot? I'm gonna give it a 7.2 out of 10. I think it's great that the service exists, and if you're the perfect use case, it's definitely a worthwhile buy. However, I think most people are gonna be better off just changing their website right at the source. If this review was helpful to you and you're gonna go ahead and grab Rebu, make sure you click the link down below in the description. That is our affiliate link, so it kicks us a little bit of money back for your transaction. We really do appreciate that and it helps us stay motivated to make more LTD reviews like this one. If you like the video, make sure you click on like so I know you appreciate the content. Leave me any questions or comments down below and I will see you in the next review. Kusura!